Hey all, welcome back to the neighborhood. Today, we're taking a look at the Harmonic Dine Zeus. This has been somewhat of a divisive headphone, with some loving it, others liking it, and some feeling a bit disappointed. I was sent the Zeus by the Honest Audiophile, and I appreciate him sending in this rather large case for a review. Make sure to check out his channel and consider giving him a subscription over there as well. Dave and I tend to share items mostly for public service, because we both agree, even when we disagree, that it's better off for everyone to have more opinions on a particular product out there for the community to consider as a whole. In any case, I know many of you have been looking forward to this review, so the Harmonic Dine Zeus. Let's get into it. So prior to this review, I had a lot of questions about the build of this thing. In some photos it looked wood, while in other photos it looked as if wood veneer had been used on top of some other materials. And no one seemed to really be talking about the specifics regarding the actual construction of this headphone. So let's start with the headband. The top of the headband seems to be constructed of a black plastic housing with a pleatherette cushion on its underside and an interwoven piece of spring steel for structure. The cushion is soft enough when worn, but it does collapse rather easily. Secondary side pieces attach to the yokes, and while these appear that they could be made of metal, as they are somewhat cold to the touch, tapping on them suggests that they are likely made of painted plastic, as most of this headphone appears to be. There are pieces of wood affixed within the side pieces, and they appear to match the wood of the cups, but even the yokes appear as if they could be plastic. At the very least, they are a cheap piece of metal, which has been molded around a piece of foam of all things for support. The ear pads are listed as a nano velvet, but felt more like a faux suede. They are soft and firmer than the headband cushion, but don't feel to be stuffed with anything luxurious such as memory foam, and they did get rather hot with extended use. The cups are made out of walnut, and the open back grill is a piece of what appears to be screw affixed, thin, laser cut sheet metal. The ear cups do lay flat in either direction, which is a plus, and I do applaud Harmonic Dine for this thought. The connections used at the base of the ear cup are dual, two-poled, 3.5mm TRS connectors. The provided cable is nice enough, but the lower cloth wrap portion is a bit stiff, and the Y split appears to be cheaply made with tape wrap and heat shrink, and the length of the cable is also disappointing as it's just too short for what most will want for desktop use. If its cable length is any indication, it seems like Harmonic Dime may have been targeting people with daps here with the Zeus. The cable also terminates in a 4.4mm Pentacon connector and comes with a 4.4mm female to 3.5mm male adapter. Again, this is suggestive that designers had portability in mind when concocting the package with the Zeus here. Speaking of which, the headphone itself also comes with a foam-lined, locking metal case for portability. The case is a nice size, and seems like it comes with enough room in the side compartment to hold a DAP and the supplied cable. My major criticism here would be that I wish the Zeus also came with a second larger cable, or at least a longer connector cable, perhaps terminating in a 4-pin XLR for desktop use. But. I know you clicked on this video to hear about the sound, so let's do that. In general, timbre here is warm and fuzzy. Listening to these brings to mind the image of listening to headphones draped in a warm blanket with a nice mug of hot chocolate. So I think this headphone could be a good fit for the right person who wants a warm, engaging, and enveloping sound signature. In other words, these are enjoyable, but they are a colored headphone. More specifically, in terms of the Zeus's sound, we have a bit of a situation here where the good, the bad, and the ugly should be considered. Let's start things off with the good. Despite its somewhat soft presentation and warm tonality, I really like the treble on this headphone. It's quite expressive, slightly airy, articulate, and revealing, despite being somewhat rolled. The Zeus is the anti-harsh can. 
It takes notes which might come across as strident on other sets and turns them into pleasant melodies for your ear. This set also images surprisingly well and has excellent peripheral detailing. For example, after about the three minute mark on the track Rebel Yell by Billy Idol, there is a section that lasts for about a minute where Billy essentially echoes his own lyrics. And these echoes image left and right with delightful, enjoyable precision on the Zeus. But this brings us back to the bad. Unfortunately for the Zeus, even though its upper mid-range is mostly okay, as it moves down in the mid-range, things become hazier and hazier. Additionally, the soundstage can vary in presentation from immense to relatively limited, depending mostly upon source. So, while imaging is generally fun and engaging, on the wrong amp, the Zeus's stage lacked any semblance of a special character, while on the right amp it comes to life and comes across as very Argon-like instead. The stage is spherical, open, and with good height and decent depth to it. Amplification which did not suit the Zeus included the iFi Zincan Signature, the Zen DAC, and to a certain extent the Giselli Archel Pro. On all three of these products, the Zeus's presentation felt more boxed in and restricted in its scope. Although I still did enjoy the tonality and leaner presentation of the Giselli with the Zeus specifically, even despite its loss of stage. Furthermore, vocals are centered well and larger than the rest of the mix, but vocal expression still had a significant grain to it at times. So let's talk now about the ugly. The low end is pretty disappointing for a dynamic can. The bass here is rather one note sounding, and these sound best off amplification that smooths out and almost hides the low end presence here. Sources that paired well with the Zeus included the Gold Note DS10 Plus, the Dark Voice 336, and the Bravo Ocean. And surprisingly, the THX AAA 789 when run balance was also a good match for this set. On the Dark Voice and the Ocean, I preferred Raytheon tubes, which controlled and smoothed things out a bit. Otherwise, the bass was overly thumpy, thuddy, and sounded like a rubber eraser smacking on a desk, overly compressed and with extremely limited detailing and texture. But despite the Zeus's faults, of which some are pretty glaring, I do still enjoy this headphone. For the right person who is looking for a warm, enveloping, and immersive can when powered off the right amplification, the Harmonic Dine Zeus is hard to beat. From a non-technical standpoint, some of its faults may actually contribute to its soothing and relaxing character. In comparison to other warm and fuzzy cans in the price range, such as the Civica Phoenix, the Harmonic Dine Zeus is simply the superior headphone from both a comfort and sound perspective. And while it can't keep up with my Mark II Argons, aspects of its sound signature are reminiscent of a suede padded T60RP Argon at a significantly cheaper price. And just a reminder guys, make sure to hit subscribe here, like this video, leave some comments, and visit the neighborhood at all its other access locations, including Twitter, the blog, Instagram, or become a Patreon. The Patreon is only $1.50 a month and it gets you access to early written reviews like this one. So if you want to be the first one in the loop for hot takes on devices such as this, make sure to become a Patreon for the low, low price of $1.50 a month. And with that, I'm out for now.